Well, now I want to turn to uh, the Frenchman River Model Works build along of one of their ship models. Uh, that really is, is for me, it kind of turns into a, a, a separate industry for a lot of us on our model railroads. And uh, Tom Farrell is going to be uh, building both the, uh, the ship model and the, uh, the shed that goes with it uh, and uh, see how that goes for you. So, Tom, welcome. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you again for having me. It's always a pleasure. And... Uh... The uh, this evening we're going to uh, do a build along of a Frenchman River Model Works uh, lobster boat. Um, Frenchman River is owned by James and Anna Cleveland, and they were kind enough to donate uh, this lobster boat uh, for me to do this build along. And uh, this evening we're not really going to get too much completed, but uh, what we're going to show is is important. I imagine this is going to be in three parts, uh, two parts with the uh, lobster boat and a third part with the fishing shanty. Um, so this evening, um, just want to talk about resin kits in general. Resin kits really aren't necessarily about the assembly. The art or the challenge of a resin kit is in finishing and detailing them. And um, a resin kit has significantly more detail than a plastic injection molding molded uh, styrene kit. Um, how these things are made as a, uh, a master craftsman, like I assume James built this, um, creates his... Uh, master then he he makes a mold and then he pours the resin in there and uh you get incredible detail you get uh, all the grain and the uh wood just very fine detail so the thing about a resin kit it's all about the finishing and detailing of them and uh i've built one uh before um See, so the agenda this evening is we're going to review uh, previously built kits that I found on the internet and a couple I did myself. We're going to research some prototypes so we know what colors that we could potentially paint these. We're going to familiarize ourselves with the parts. They're still a, they still are a kit. Um, then we're going to get into the model making. We're going to remove any flash from the resin uh, parts and one thing I have to say about Frenchman River Model Works, I've built three of their kits now, and um, there is virtually no flash. That's the attention to detail these guys go to. So there isn't a lot of finish work. Um, it's really about gluing it together and painting it properly. Resin kits uh, have a mold release um, so that the resin doesn't stick to the mold. We're going to show you how you remove that. Then we're going to prime the uh, components, and then we're going to put a base color on there. So first, I want to review a couple previously built kits, not by me, but what I could find on the internet. Um, I found this green one, basically. So the color choices are really up to you and, uh, and how you place these details and these figures. These figures aren't part of the kit, but these lobster uh, traps are. And... Um, this is the one that's featured on the box. This is particularly well-made, and it's a nice color scheme, red, white, and blue. <laughs> I wanted to do a little research to see what my color choices were. And here's an up-close of the, uh, the deck and the cabin area. You can see the detail that's been put on here. This, these components all come with the kit, this buoy, this... Uh, little tackle device, the steering wheel, this door, these, these lobster kits, this will all require uh, assembly. So there's an up close of the uh, controls. See how, talk about how you do this uh, next time. Um, see the metallic look to that. We'll tell you how to do that with graphite. 
and then this is looking down. Um, mine will be a little dirtier than this. <laughs> okay. Here's the first Frenchman River Model Works boat that I built. I think I did a segment on this. And the uh, reason I show this is just to show you the, another color scheme that you could apply to the lobster boat. <clears throat> Since these are working boats, they should look like working boats. Um, Greg Cassidy pointed out when I originally demonstrated, showed this model, uh, I had a white deck. He said, that's probably pretty untypical. So I went back and re repaint that, repainted that. Going forward with this lobster boat, right off the get-go, we'll have a weathered deck. Um, maybe even raw wood, I we'll see. But anyway, these are the shows off the incredible detail, the block and tackle, the chains. This all came with the kit. And it comes in the lobster boat is no different. There's an up close of the weathering technique that uh, I'll demonstrate and uh, later in the next uh, the next segment. But these this weathered look is easily achievable even by a first time modeler. There's really as I it's really only a three or four step process to yield what I consider really spectacular weathered results. This was a scratch built uh, skiff that I made out of wood and uh, some plastic here. Um, again, um, we're gonna demonstrate weathering techniques, painting techniques. Um, these will all be applied to the, uh, the lobster boat. Again, these, this is not difficult to achieve. It's uh, really simple techniques just highlighting. I'm focusing on this because there isn't too much to the assembly of this kit. It is all about learning the techniques to uh, finish them, finish them like a lobster boat or a working commercial fishing boat. They all have to look beat to hell if you want a realistic look about things. So I pulled a couple photos of like prototypes off the internet to get an idea of potential color schemes. You can choose to paint your boat really any color, red, blue, green. This one has a wood, um, uh, not a boat guy, wood uh, cabin. Uh, uh, I'm probably leaning towards going to this, uh, a, a wood top, if you will. And then uh, on the side, I'm going to have it uh, more or less white with um, maybe a, a blue or red racing, probably a blue racing stripe on it. You can just go white with a weathered effect. This looks pretty spectacular to me as far as the look. This could be easily achievable with um, some base colors and some washes of acrylic. We'll demonstrate some techniques next week on that. Looks like I blew this picture up a little bit too much, but this is another, you know, another way you can do it. You know, just it's really limited by your imagination. This one's all white on the top with a red side. This one has the water, water line uh, blue, and then the side is white, and then a finished wood. I'm kind of favoring that. I was very tempted to do this, to take my boat and uh, put it up on blocks and show a derelict. <laughs> I may do this on a second kit because I really, when I came across this photo, I thought this would be perfect for the rustic buff and old Gothic railroad. There's another section layout that I'm going to do this. So it's going to be at least a year away, but you remember this little photo because I'm going to emulate that. There's another one that's out of the water and just weathered to hell. See all the chip paint and things. Again, we're focusing on this because the kit goes together and the main pieces in five minutes and the detail pieces another couple hours. So it's really about taking the time to finish the kit. 
So this is the box that it comes in. And uh, it's an overview of the paints. There's a, right on the front of the box is uh, an inventory of the parts as delivered. And I took them out and uh, examined everything. So basically you've got these three cast resin pieces, these lobster cages, and uh, some cast metal parts, these buoys and some deck material and that little crane. So there isn't a lot to this, um, but that's okay. It's a super detailed kit. It's tough to see up front. That's not a great resolution photograph, but th there is incredible detail molded into this. So this was the first part. There was a little flash here. My picture seems to be out of focus. Um, that was the only flash on the entire model. <laughs> and uh, there's a little better picture. So I just took a file and filed that away. See these uh, nail holes that are molded in? See the wood grain that's molded in? This guy, um, James Cleveland, went to a great deal of trouble to get that kind of uh, detail in his model. Uh, uh, in contrast, a plastic injection molded model would typically, that would just be flat. <clears throat> Before you paint a resin kit, you have to remove the mold release. That can be easily done with an old toothbrush and just Dawn dish soap in your kitchen sink or bathroom sink, or if you have a working sink. Um, you definitely want to do this because your paint could potentially lift if you don't. Let's take a minute here and look at that roof detail. Look at the deck detail. Look at the cabin detail. That I mean, that is just incredible. A beautiful model. I primed my model with uh, Tamaya surface primer. I've talked about this before. You don't want to use an automotive primer on this kit because you'll fill in all that fine detail. This is called a surface primer because it's a relatively light pigmented paint. It does not, uh, it's not a, most automobile primers are fillers. They are purposely uh, mixed to fill in the very fine detail that we want to show in this particular model. So my advice is go to the trouble of buying this at Hobby Lobby or one of your hobby shops or get yourself the surface primer. It's worth its cost. It's not exactly, I don't know, what it's nine bucks a can or something like that, but um, lasts forever and it's definitely worth the trouble. If you don't have it, delay your priming of your kit to you obtain a nice surface primer like that. And there it is, um, primed and dry. And you can see the detail is still there in the woodwork. Um, a little fill in here. Imagine if this is automotive primer, it would fill all the decking in. So you can still see the nail holes. We're going to go back with uh, alcohol washes, and it will, uh, once we have the finished paint on there, you'll We'll bring all these highlights out. Next, oh, when you do prime, when you do paint this, by the way, uh, you hit it in all directions. Uh, either turn the model, or if you have the ability to go 360 degrees around the model, lightly spray it in all directions. And on this particular uh, model, you want to spray the inside of the cabin as well because you're going to see this. You won't see that, but you'll see this. Even that roofing, uh, say, has detail on it, the wood grain. So flip this thing over and paint that as well. <clears throat> now, just as I got done telling you to be careful how you <laughs> fly paint, this chalky finish is something that I've, really grown to like. I used it on my 
first Frenchman River fishing boat. This paint is exactly what it says. It gives you a chalky finish. It's much better than even a flat. It looks weathered right out of the can. Um, and so long as you're careful and spray it lightly, particularly since you have a gray primer underneath, you don't need to put a lot of paint on there. There, you can almost not even tell the difference between this photo and the gray primer photo, but this is the this is the white Brylon chalky finish all on it. So you can still see the detail here, see the wood grain, see the nail holes, the deck holes. So we haven't covered anything really up. So part two will be next Wednesday, and we're part two. We're going to uh, more or less finish the boat. These three pieces will be super glued onto the hull. We'll I will have chosen some colors. Uh, think about what colors you want to make the boat. Uh, this cover shot of the box. This is a nice color scheme itself. Don't be ashamed. Just emulate what uh, James did on his um, model here. It's a nice scheme. I think I'm going to go with a wooden deck color, leave the side white, paint the bottom red. I think that's what I'm going to go with. And uh, part three, we will, uh, so next week we will uh, put the model together. We'll give us all our base colors on there. Part three, I will weather the model and show you the fishing shack, uh, what I did with that. So uh, once again, if you haven't bought uh, one of these and you want to do a build along, there is a discount available from Frenchman River Model Works. And again, um, this fella also carries the Tom York uh, kits in O scale. Um, and there's a new Tom York being released, uh, I think within a month or so, but take a look at this website. This guy is, uh, it's www.frenchmanriver.com, .com. credible models, all in resin. Okay. Any questions? Tom, this is Jeff. It sounds like you haven't started painting yet, so let me give you some nautical suggestions. On your slide there with the four boats, the one on the upper left with all the uh, varnished wood, yeah. that's somebody's pleasure boat. That's not a working lobster boat. It <laughs> takes a tremendous amount of work to keep it looking that way. That wood weathers. It needs to be sanded. It needs to be varnished. I don't think you find a lob a working lobster boat finished that way. Um, the weathered white paint, from my experience in the Coast Guard Auxiliary and in the main waterfront, is is you're not going to see a lot of natural wood on a working boat. It takes too much work to keep it up. Crap. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I haven't painted it yet, so. Uh... I think I read the story on that boat, and he if I, it is a pleasure boat, and he had it built by one of the boats to build the lobster boats. And they'll do them for pleasure craft because they're very uh, robust along the coast. So, all yeah, right, it's a beautiful, beautiful boat. But my goodness, all of that wood—he <laughs> probably has to pay somebody to sand it and varnish it every season. Every season. <laughs> well, let me just go on record that I made an attempt to make something nice for the rust. <laughs> <laughs> and I will go back and paint it up so it looks like the wreck of the has, you know. <laughs> the, the one the one on the lower left looks like a lobster boat to me. <laughs> All right, that's what we're going we're going ugly. Okay. <laughs> going ugly. You want to be authentic. All right, I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Tom. We really do appreciate it. All right, thank you for having me. Yep. Yes, sir. Thank you so much.